All right. Well, thank you all for coming. Um, also, thanks to Luke for organizing this dev room, but I don't think he's inside right now. Well, thanks to him anyway. Um, brief introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Nicolai Hanle. The NL sound is a bit difficult for me as well. Um, I am somebody who likes both the theoretical and the applied. So I have a PhD in math, did research on discrete optimization. But I also always like to contribute to open source software and actually got started with graphics drivers around 15 years ago when I uh, reverse engineered back then the Radeon R300 uh, 3D programming interface. So it's kind of fitting that uh, today I work in AMD's Linux open source graphics driver uh, development group. My main focus is on, on the Mesa OpenGL driver. I do also do some work uh, in LLVM and occasionally some other things. Uh, but in this talk, I will give you a um, more overall overview over our graphic stack on Linux. So I like to start with a picture that kind of shows the high level components. At the bottom in red, you have two kernel modules, the Radeon and the AMD GPU, the more modern uh, kernel module. They do the mode setting, the memory management, all that. Above that, you have user space. So there is this thin libdrm layer. And uh, on the left-hand side, uh, components that are part of the, of the X server. So the X server has the, the general you know, device independent code and input code. But it also has some um, graphics device specific code. In our case, there are Radeon and AMD GPU uh, X server drivers, which correspond to the kernel module of the same name. So if you're using the Radeon kernel module, you'd use the Radeon uh, DDX, and the same with AMD GPU. And then to the right of that, you have a bunch of um, different driver components that implement uh, graphics APIs like OpenGL and Vulkan. So there are parts that live in the Mesa open source project under the OpenGL and multimedia umbrella, as I like to think of it. There is the R600 driver, which is for you know, older pre-Graphics Core Next GCN uh, graphics card. And there is the Radeon SI driver, which is for uh, the mod more modern cards since, let's say, 2012. Um, it builds on LLVM for its shader compiler backend. Uh, same as the RADV Vulkan driver, which also lives in the Mesa project and was developed by um, community members. And then to the right, you have some other drivers that are developed by AMD that have more of a, a Windows origin. There is the, what we call the AMD VLK uh, Vulkan driver, which is the same uh, driver code base as the one that Windows users get. Uh, and there is um, um, another OpenGL driver, which is really mostly relevant for workstation workloads. Now, there are many ways to kind of slice and group this diagram. One that I think is maybe most relevant for Vostim is what's open source and what isn't. And you see that almost everything is open source. Um, there is a, a story about the Vulkan driver, and I'll get to that in more detail. It's uh, open source with a caveat that has to do with this SCPC component. Uh, and the, the um, closed source OpenGL driver, which, well, it's, it's closed source and, and looks like it's going to be that way and stay that way. Um, another way to slice this diagram is just by, you know, what kind of hardware is being supported by it. I, I mentioned the GCN, which is kind of a breaking point for us. 2012, uh, new generation of hardware. Everything that's in green uh, supports uh, those cards. What's in red is only for the older cards. And you see that the Radeon kernel module is kind of in between those two. And in the same vein, like slightly different colors now, um, there are legacy components that are not necessarily going away because there is still old hardware and it should still be supported. But um, we are not doing new feature development on them, uh, which is you know, the Radeon kernel module DDX driver, um, the OpenGL driver for older hardware. And this problematic SCPC component we would also like to, to phase out. OK. So, so this is hopefully clear to people in the room here. If you do have questions, uh, please ask them. Um, some 
major milestones of last year. There was a big story of upstreaming a new display driver in the AMD GPU kernel module called DC. There is the you know, kind of Christmas present of open sourcing the Vulkan driver. Um, there is something about um, package delivery that I will talk about later. We achieved um, conformance on OpenGL 4.5 in the open source Mesa driver. And we managed and continue to manage, we have been doing that for some time, uh, to deliver zero day support for new hardware in open source drivers. Uh, some caveats, I'll get to that, but there, there was a release in open source and you could get it to work. Um, yeah, it has to do with the display driver. Um, okay, so brief overview of this, you know, Radeon AMD GPU situation where the Radeon module was kind of red and green a little bit. What happened was that, so in the middle you see kind of, you know, hardware generations of our hardware. And what happened um, was basically that the Radeon kernel module is the one that was always there. But about five years ago, more or less, there was a decision internally to AMD to do Linux right and to do open source right. And uh, part of this decision was to say, well, you know, back then there was this thing called FGLRX for a closed source driver. Uh, we don't want that anymore. We want to have one single kernel module which works with all our drivers. And that is basically how the AMD GPU uh, kernel module uh, got started. Uh, its initial development was in the uh, Sea Island uh, generation, and then kind of the way, the, the time when we really committed to it was with the volcanic islands. So, and, and then the support was backported. So the idea is that AMD GPU is really for everything that's GCN, and Radeon at some point should be phased out for GCN and, and only used for the older uh, cards. Right, so you know, AMD GPU just supports some more modern features. Um, all the Vulkan drivers only work with AMD GPU because of you know, certain features that are lacking in the older kernel module. Uh, it also supports our compute stacks. It has a GPU scheduler. Um, and um, so the idea is really that going forward, you should use AMD GPU for all the modern cards, which is not the case today by default, just because you know, we don't want to, you know, there might still be some bugs. And I mean, we don't really, we think it works, but People get really angry when you break their system when they update their kernel, so changing the defaults will maybe still take some time. But you can switch with these kernel command line arguments since, since 4.13. Okay? Right, so one of the milestones that I mentioned was upstreaming DC, this new display driver. Now, why do we want to do that? I mean, it dis it, you know, implementing a display driver is actually a lot of work. There's a lot of magic that goes on that you have to talk to hardware engineers. And being able to, to share a common code base with other operating systems and um, really helps to support all the kind of more advanced features that you expect from a, from, a, from a display driver, like these days supporting audio via HDMI, supporting advanced display port configurations, and all that kind of stuff. So the decision was made that kind of an existing display team within AMD should be brought into the open source world. And if anybody has ever been in contact with such a project, you know that that's very, very difficult. I think you know, it took longer than people in AMD that we hoped for, of course. But I think um, we're in a good place now. The display team has really arrived in the Linux kernel community, I would say. Um, but it was a challenge, you know, it, it's a huge code base, around 130,000 lines of code. Uh, it was first published as, you know, cleaned up open source um, basically two years ago, and it, and it took almost these two years to, to actually get it upstream. And, and this is, leads to the, you know, the caveat that I mentioned before, because um, the display driver, the, the new one, it, it supports almost all of GCN, but the point is that it's required since our very latest generation of hardware, the, the Vega generation. Um, so, you know, at the time that Vega released, there was open source support fully for Vega. It was not upstream yet. Now everything is upstream, and going forward, it will all be upstream. So I think we're in a, in a really good place now with uh, the display driver. All right, now let me talk a bit longer about kind of the, the big news from um, December. Uh, we've been saying for a long time that we will have an open source Vulkan driver. And, uh, you know, the team, the internal team worked hard to make that possible, and now it has happened. 
You can download it from GitHub. You can build it yourself. And I mean, some people have done that, so it should work. Um, it is the same code base that the, the Windows Vulkan driver uses. And actually, it is largely even the same code base that the Windows uh, DirectX 12 uh, driver uses, because they internally share a lot of code in a uh, common library called PAL, the uh, Platform Abstraction Library. And I'll get to that in a moment. Um, it supports all the uh, you know, GCN-based um, GPUs with the AMD GPU uh, kernel module. There is some you know, kind of official support level for distributions. You know, you're people who can work, you know, compile things yourself. It should really work on, on all the distros. There is no particular reason why it should only work on Ubuntu or Red Hat. But this is kind of you know, what, what the Vulkan team has committed to that, that uh, they support. And um, if you use anything else, you know, go download it and try it out. You know, it, should, it should work. <laughs> Yeah. Does that also apply to 32-bit? Uh, yes, the Vulkan driver um, should also work with 32 bits because on you know Windows, many games still using 32 bits, and I, I, I see no reason why not. I mean, I, I hope I'm not saying anything wrong, you know, I'm not, but I think it should work. Yeah. I don't know if there are games on Linux <laughs> that are, use Vulkan and are 32 bits. I, I don't know, actually. Okay. Yeah. That's. Yeah, that's a fair point. Um, brief comparison. So we're now in the kind of funny situation that there are three different Vulkan drivers that you can use on Linux with AMD graphics cards. There is the open source uh, AMD VLK driver, and there is a closed source variant of this AMD VLK driver. Why is there a closed source variant? Well, the thing is that what is the co shader compiler backend? The open source variant uses LLVM for a shader compiler backend, but the closed source variant uses an, an internal shader compiler backend that, for various reasons, uh, was not open sourced and will likely never be open sourced because the kind of the thrust is more towards going to LLVM. Uh, and then there is the community developed uh, RADV driver that lives in the in the Mesa rep repository. And this is kind of a, a, on some highlights a comparison of these drivers, right? Uh, the two outside ones are open source. The AMD VLK driver is being supported by AMD. The, the RADV one isn't. Um, community contributions can go to, to both of the outside ones. I don't know if there has been a contribution so far to the AMD VLK driver, but the Vulkan team would like to have them. They're, they're very open to that and would wel welcome them. So you, know, you are very inv invited. Um, the, the AMD VLK closed is kind of in a funny situation because, of course, you can't really contribute to it, but it's the same code base as the open one. So, you know, your contributions might end up uh, running for Windows users as well. Um, AMD VLK lives in its own repository on GitHub, whereas RADV lives in the, in the Mesa tree. Um, the open source ones, they use LLVM. Um, well, our QA only looks at, at our driver, of course. Um, well, support for new GPUs, obviously uh, the Vulkan team that we have internally gets a head start in implementing uh, features of, of new GPUs and will be able to have uh, zero-day support um, as they have had in the past. Whereas with RADV, I mean, the, the people who are working on RADV, you know, they're really good guys and they also contribute to our OpenGL driver and I really like working with them, but they are at an inherent disadvantage there. Um, there is a lot of tooling that AMD produces, uh, especially for game developers, you know, for game developers to be able to look at their frames, analyze their performance, et cetera, et cetera. And the uh, official driver supports it. Um, well, Windows support, you see, I mean, <laughs> theoretically, the open driver could run on, on Windows if you added the parts that are missing, which are not open source yet, so it's, uh, <laughs> well. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about the architecture. I already mentioned, yeah? Um, on that, um, so what's the plan with Mesa upstream? Is it, is it going to be in the Mesa or? <sighs> with, with my Mesa hat on, I would say it doesn't really make much sense because it's a bit of an alien uh, element in there. 
Um, it's, it's, not, it's not a plan at the moment because it's too disjoint. I mean, even when Intel wrote their Vulkan driver, people so thought, hey, well, maybe, should this really be inside of Mesa? But then they had a good reason because they share the shader compiler. Um, whereas here, this is not the case. Only the LLVM parts are shared, so, yeah. And the next question, how does the shader compiler compare between the open and the closed? Wait for my other talk and there will be more details there. <laughs> Okay, a brief look at the, at the architecture. Um, so this is kind of from top to bottom what is running when a Vulkan application is running. There is a loader, libvulkan, which is provided by, by Kronos, or actually developed by Luna G, but the details don't matter, so it's vendor independent. It loads the, the Vulkan driver, and uh, the Vulkan driver internally has a, two parts. The part that is called XGL because of the legacy, and this one lives in its own repository. And then there is a, the part called PAL, which, again, also lives in its own repository. And so the interesting part is that most of the knowledge about what the hardware actually looks like lives in this, in this PAL component, right? The, the Vulkan API translation component, of course, there's also background knowledge about the hardware in there. You couldn't just take that and use it, I don't know, for an Intel Vulkan driver. That, that wouldn't make sense. But most of the hardware details are down there or in the, in the shader compiler or pipeline compiler as it's called here. Um, this is a bit of a more detailed view of what PAL has. By client, uh, the diagram means, you know, like the, the Vulkan front end that translates Vulkan to PAL. And then, you know, there are operating system parts. I was told not to go too over there. And on the right-hand side, there is kind of a clean design where the source code structure mirrors the hardware structure. You have some component that is kind of the, the graphics IP where the actual 3D rendering happens. There is a component called OSS, which means Operating System Services, which is basically uh, where the DMA engine and the transfer queue lives for those who know Vulkan. And, and there is a, a video encode, decode part, which has some um, AMD extensions for that that are implemented there. Um, something should be said about the development process. So the way it works currently is, is this. There is the repository on GitHub. Um, contributors are welcome to submit pull requests, which would be added into the internal code base where development happens. From there, there is a regular automated code cleanup uh, process to you know, remove things like references to new hardware that has not been released yet. And from there, there are weekly pushes back into the GitHub repository. And from there, people are free to take it, you know, compile it themselves. Distributions would be very welcome to, to package it, obviously. Um, also, our official packages um, will probably, well, they will probably for the time being not be derived from the GitHub code base. Maybe I'll mention something for that. There is a separate LLVM branch also for, for stability because there are kind of specific patches that need to be cherry-picked. Um, but its development follows a bit of a different model because in the case of LLVM, LLVM is the upstream, and the, the ideal is really to get the required changes into LLVM upstream uh, as much as possible. Okay, future plans for this. There is op optimization work that's going on to get... So, so right now, the situation with the shader backend is that the LLVM-based one is not quite up to par to the closed-source SCPC one, and the, but the goal is to get them equivalent or maybe even LLVM better so that we can really say, yes, the LLVM-based one is the one that we, we um, distribute everywhere. Uh, and of course, in the future, you know, there will be feature support, new GPUs will come out. And um, you know, the, the Vulkan team is aware that getting a proper open source process going is, is not uh, always easy. And they do want to make sure that an external contribution process is, is ironed out and, and work properly. All right, I do have some more slides about how do we actually deliver our drivers to our users. Now, the main thing to take away here, really the main important thing is we want things to be upstream first, right? For, for as much as we can do that, so that people can just you know, get their distributions and it'll just work out of the box with AMD hardware. And you know, for the most part, this is actually where we are today. Right? This is where we are today for the most part. Um, but there are some cases where we need to provide our own packages. So this happens because of you know, specific 
customer engagements maybe. It happens you know, when new hardware com comes. New hardware doesn't always align with when the distributions pull from upstream. So um, for that, we have our own packages that we provide. And since uh, the end of 2017, we provide them as a kind of layered approach where there is an all open, open source core onto which additional closed source packages may be installed. Um, this works in a release calendar that's shared with Windows. It has these version numbers like you know, 1750, 1810, it will be the next one, and so on. And right now, what happens is you can download a big tarball, um, distribution-specific tarball from the AMD website. It'll contain packages. So for Ubuntu, it contains DEBs. For uh, Red Hat, it contains RPM. Uh, those can be installed via a script, or maybe if you're adventurous, even um, by hand. And those are the distributions that we're supporting there. And just to remind you of this picture that we had in the beginning and looking at it from the perspective of what's in the all open core and what's on the um, kind of pro add-on, the all open core um, consists of everything that's, that's in green. And all the stuff that's in green will also be present if you're using the, the pro add-on. Um, specifically, you know, the pro add-on contains the workstation OpenGL driver, but multimedia will still use the, the, the Mesa code. Um, currently, it contains the, this Vulkan driver because you know, the, the compiler part, which is not closed source, but of course the plan is to transition that um, to the fully open source LLVM basis. <coughs> All right. So, you know, I'm, I'm almost done a bit before time on purpose so that people have time to, to switch if they want to leave because I, I do have a talk now also, but it will be much more technical. I think it's very interesting, but maybe uh, the, the target audience is a bit uh, less broad. Um, the main thing to, to take away from this is, you know, there was a conscious decision made five years ago to try to, you know, do Linux and do open source right with an AMD. And it's been a long process and not everything has been 100% figured out now, but I think we're in a very good place right now. If today you, know, you buy an AMD GPU, it will work with the standard packages, maybe with the tiny caveat that if it's very, very new, then maybe your distribution doesn't have it yet and you might have to compile your own upstream thing. But um, I think we've gone a long, uh, we've come a long way and you know, we're still going to continue with that. So, Thank you for your attention. Yeah, maybe start here. Are there any plans to merge the AMD Vulkan effort with Radium V or Red V? That is a very good question. And um, in some sense, that's a question that I can't answer because I work on neither project. Um, I think. Um, right now, the situation is kind of maybe one of friendly competition. You know, having both drivers kind of makes both of them better. Um, in the end, we'll see how things play out. Um, you know, obviously, we would like, I, I think, I mean, merging is not really something that makes sense based no, on how the code base are stuck. But maybe taking the best effort merging. effort merging, certainly. And, uh, you know, this depends on people who are potentially interested <laughs> in it. Um, the Vulcan team is aware that maybe the process needs to be worked out. And you know, if you're interested in, in these kinds of things, um, you know, try and talk to them. <laughs> yeah. It may have been slightly longer. I wasn't, I wasn't at AMD back then personally. And I don't know at what time the effort really started and at what time was being talked about. I, I'm not a historian on these things. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think back back of the window. You think? So what led to that decision? Oh. The decision to try to do it properly. You know, again, I wasn't there, but my imagination is that it was a mixture of um, getting both, you know, in some sense, an, a better brand recognition in kind of a small but still technologically important corner. But also, you know, there are just customers who say we want open source drivers. Give them to us. We want them for support. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, there was another history les lesson maybe over there. So the question was whether that is really a commitment to move to open source. To, 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 to stay in the yeah, we, yes. Uh, I mean, in the past we had some uh, nasty surprises uh, with the uh, from the core boot project. We had some okay, well, uh, maybe we take that offline. I don't know what you're talking about, but. I think, I think that if you look at the signs fairly, I think they point in the direction that it's a serious commitment. And there, there are good reasons for it. Like I said, there are really customers who are asking for that. Now, sorry, you were, yeah. Um, the first question, um, yeah, so, so the question, the question was about the documentation available for availability for GPUs. Um, there is absolutely documentation out there. So if you go to AMD's, if you search for, I don't know what the right keyword is, developer resource, I mean, there is a page that has lots of CPU documentation and GPU documentation, including the ISA and everything. It, it's not as much documented as we would like. I mean, sometimes maybe you also have higher expectations of what our internal documentation looks like than what it really has. Um, <laughs> It's just, you know, we don't have infinite amount of money and, and it, it takes the time to go through, you know, to make sure that things are cleaned up if there is something that can't be released. And we try, but, you know, in the end, the code is the best documentation. So documentation-wise, there are proposals that we Okay, uh, maybe one more, maybe one more question, and then we go to the. Other. So uh, I, I was actually wondering about Wayland. Yes. So what uh, can you give any status, or is it going to be hard to support it? Um, it well, so 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 at least with OpenGL, Wayland works out of the box uh, since quite some time. Yeah. For for Vulkan, I don't know. I this was mentioned to me from someone <laughs> in the Vulkan team, and, and I didn't. Um, you know, verify what precisely is needed. It is possible that maybe some small extension is missing. I mean, in the end, it shouldn't be much because you just, you know, just need to ex export surfaces in the right way. And um, I was sending that, like, future Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> There, there, is an, there is an alternative to CUDA, and it's called Rockham. Hmm? There is an alternative to CUDA already, and it's called Rockham. And it works. It works. Um, well, the problem is that there is this, it's not just CUDA, right? There is this whole infrastructure of, of learning frameworks. And, and, well, we're working on it, but it's an uphill battle, unfortunately. And, yeah. Can you repeat, please? What is the name? Rockham, R-O-C-M. Well, maybe, well, yeah, I think, I think that's okay. I, there was recently some trademark thing, but look for Radeon Open Compute, and, you know, that's, that's a CUDA-like thing. Okay. okay. Uh. <laughs>